How many of you read read the headlines on your smartphones? As most of you do. Read the headline on your smartphone today about the guy who was interviewing Tom Brady. And Tom Brady cut the interview short because he called the interviewer called Tom Brady's five-year-old kid a pissant. I think that's interesting because I had had the staff pull up a tape we were just looking at. It was a coincidence because, you know, I, I think that most of us equate the word pissant with that song, Kill a Pissant for Jesus. But you know, that's an old word. First time it was used was in 1661. You know me, I love history. <laughs> and there are, wait for the pun, there are two streams. for this word. <coughs> you can go look that up for yourself. I think I'm going to leave that one alone. But the, the meaning is kind of interesting. But if you were to look up this word, you'd also find in 1978 some reporter called Jerry Brown a pissant. We'll find that reporter so we can give him a medal. <laughs> Somebody asked me, what, what do you think is better? Was it better when, when it was you know, Jerry Brown now? Were we in better hands with Schwarzenegger? <laughs> and I, I thought, but did you have to remind me of that? <laughs> That almost left my mind briefly. But on the subject of piss ants, I just, you know, it's just so interesting that I think some people forget the history um, of many things. You know, the way we use terminology, which kind of stems from this wonderful clip. I thought it'd be. Just wonderful to play for you. Enough time to do it. Take a look at this. Down! I got blessed when I walked in here and saw that Ron had written a new song. <laughs> well, I'm glad I made it too, Dad. Piss ants again. <laughs> like I told you, we may not make it by July 16th, but there'll be the damnedest mountain of dead piss ants you ever saw in your life. <clears throat> well, People have been trying to find that in Webster's. <laughs> and I got clearance the other night. That's not a swear word. Webster's, as close as they come, they tell me, is Pissmeyer's. <laughs> so if you check that out, you'll come close. The devil has decided that we're so ready for giants he changed his tactics. How many, how many lived through the experience with me the other night on the piss ants? <clears throat> You're not going to believe this. You know, I have a PhD in philosophies of education from Stanford. But I totally blacked out this morning and could not remember how to tie my tie.
piss ants, <laughs> little things. I mean, I've had that happen a few times before, as every man has, you know. But you know, you just sort of leave it there and put your suspenders on or something, and it comes back to you. <laughs> but it totally departed from me this morning. Then when I said, damn the devil, I don't need to wear a tie. I've gone sloppy for some years now. Then it all came back suddenly. <laughs> and somebody had changed, at my directions, had changed my Bible from passenger section of the car where I normally carry it to the trunk and it's about worn out now and I guess they didn't dare try to figure out where the pages go so some pages had come out and they laid them somewhere else and it happened to be the section I wanted to preach on This ends. Little things. And then I got in the, finally got in the car, and a sneezing fit attacked me. I sneezed for fully three miles. I'm serious. <clears throat> and then, you know, you get done sneezing, you've torn your throat apart and your voice apart. And I finally quit worrying about a handkerchief and washed the inside of my windshield with snot and tried to, <laughs> tried to figure out where the devil might be positioned and just really let it go. Begin to rejoice in a new experience called sneezing for Jesus. And <laughs> you know, wave at everybody and do the sign of the cross and then let her go. <laughs> not not going to let these, it may be late, but I'm not letting these piss ants keep me from pressing on anymore. And now that I've got it analyzed, uh, frankly, they're a little easier to handle than the giants. Where they get to you is when you just don't bring them in your focus meter. You're so busy with the giants that the piss ants have got you before you know it. Now that I know where the enemy is, we're pressing on. Ron wrote a song, Kill Some Piss Ants. <laughs> Kill Some Piss Ants for Jesus. I'm telling you, not very many ministries can Ron really let his, his gift flower. Kill Some Piss Ants for Jesus, grind them right through the floor. Kill some piss ants for Jesus and then kill one piss ant more. <laughs> Be sure to give God the glory for knowledge to set spirits free. Kill some piss ants for Jesus and then kill some piss ants for me. <laughs> a giant is easy to spot in a fight. The roar of a lion will muster your might. The challenge of mountains that loom into view will bring forth raw courage from me and from you. But those little piss ants will crawl up your thigh and then without warning will bite you real high. <laughs> Remember, small foxes can spoil a good vine, so stomp hard and be so inclined. Kill some piss ants for Jesus. Go, man. <clears throat> i 
keep pressing on, whether it's giants or little things. So I just wanted to share that with you because I think some of you have forgotten the meaning of that. And certainly in the media today, that little sound bite on a four or five year old child from a reporter kind of a ditzy reference when you consider that's really what it should be referencing. <laughs> now, I'm still taking your reservations and all the phone calls you need to get doing right now, get busy, get on the telephone. <laughs> 